I think, um, and I think it's really important for young people to know that you kind of need that determination. You kind of need that sort of, it really helps to have that, it doesn't it? To have that sort of like, I don't care what anybody thinks. I know that this is, I'm destined to do this. Is that? I know, but there, I know I've taught kids who say that they're destined to do it and they're not destined to do it. So yeah. it's, there's a lot of, a lot of yeah. holes in that one. Mm -hmm. I, I am so lucky. Right. Because I'm no, I know I've taught people go. I feel this thing. I must do this thing, <clears throat> and you go okay. That doesn't mean that you'll have a life in the theater or in the theater in film and whatever you want to do in the mm -hmm. arts. I, I don't know what combination it is. It's not just ability because if people aren't very good when they're young who become very good later on. Mm -hmm. It's timing, it's everything and it is, it's luck and the stars, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but when I got <coughs> that, I got a job with a really good children's theater group mm -hmm. and I got paid mm -hmm. and I was able to tell my parents after having, you know, uh, you know, had to tell them I got kicked out mm -hmm. and I was rejected that I had a job. Now they didn't like that because they wanted to see me in something established but mm -hmm. God we got a decent pay and then we went on tour and I got away from my boyfriend <laughs> yeah, yeah. and went up to Gaspizé mm -hmm. and, um, and, the, and the director liked my acting mm -hmm. but that shame, I'm not sure that the shame of that experience is still gone which is a failure of of therapy, I guess, but <laughs> I don't know. I think it's sometimes I, I, I think artists we hold on to it because it's a part of uh, what fuels us. I think it's sometimes you know, maybe that's bad, but I think that's what happened. I don't know. I don't know. It was uh, you know, and then you know, then you find out so and so got kicked out. I mean, it's not a big deal. And I've gone back to National Theater School and spoke there and thanked them for kicking me out because Why it led did you me. Thank them? Well, I did thank them because mm. I wasn't happy there. That wasn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I wanted. I didn't want to just do, do regional theaters and be an actor like that, but mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about who I was. I mm -hmm. didn't know. I didn't know there was a writer inside me. Now, let's go backwards a bit, because you were at Dawson College. Yes. But apparently, had some other. Sorry, you had some other students that um, you were you you you, you, you uh, were in class with that uh, we might know. We, yeah, Nikki Guadagni was in that mm -hmm. class. And um, Richard Greenblatt was in the class, and uh, Hilton Rosemarin was in the class. I mean, out of that class, two people got into RADA and one got into National Theatre School. Mm -hmm. And there was other people, and I, I'm blanking on names, but mm -hmm. you know, that's also part of it. If you, that there were other people who were serious. It wasn't a hobbyist thing. Mm -hmm. And we had movement, and we didn't so much have, have a voice. But we had scene study, and I did the Tennessee Williams thing, and mm -hmm. and we made up a play, like we, you know, plagiarized from The Happy Prince, mm -hmm. and Richard Greenblatt wrote a song that I still remember that was so beautiful. So we had songs in it. Can you sing a part of it? Can you do it? You can do a little bit. If you there once was there, there once was a happy prince who lived a long time ago. He never worried at all. Never a care or a woe had he. That's amazing. All that time. Mm -hmm. But he That's so nice. he was he was doing that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a wonderful woman, Rachel Jolin. And, but see, I didn't realize that the me that had that book and said, "Why don't we do this?" was mm -hmm. a different person from the regional actor that would play the ingenues. Right. I yeah. looked like a classic ingenue. Mm -hmm. I had conventional ingenue looks, mm -hmm. but my mind was not that. Mm -hmm. It was but, bigger. But, or stranger, or oh, weirder, yeah. or something. Tell me about Victor Victor Knight. Knight? Yeah. And the other teacher who was very nice to me. Rich, I wasn't really one of Victor Knight's people, and I can't remember. He was from the West Indies. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was very nice to me. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, he was a guy over from Britain and who really saw that the class was very talented mm -hmm. and gave everything, you know. I mean, I mean, uh, it was um, a new school, a new time, you could invent something. Mm -hmm. And on the basis of the success afterwards of the, that group, Dawson College has a very good theater department now. Mm -hmm. But to be around people who were actually serious about it. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, I was still, you know, I was still living at home and that was a different world. And I don't think, I mean, I don't know what other parents thought, but this was, 
I was under the guise of getting an education in history. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'd always been in place, so I was in place, but the turn to professional was not encouraged. What was happening politically at the time? What ah, was that? Politically, I'm not sure about this because I get my dates mixed up, but I think the FLQ crisis happened when I was in Dawson College. Mm. And the place was right near the QPP building. Wow. We always imagined that people were coming in and being tortured and stuff. The, the independentist movement was very strong. Mm -hmm. It was very highly charged. It was the f and all of a sudden, it was like, you know, I was supposed to learn French. And before, I think we deliberately didn't learn French. Mm -hmm. It was some kind of Anglo stand, or we didn't have to, because, uh, you know, I, I was the problem. Part me and my kind were the mm -hmm. problem. There was never an effort to, to speak French. Mm -hmm. And all the people with the lower jobs were French. Mm -hmm. So it was just, you know, a mess, but it was very charged. And, um, and, and there were bombs and people were getting kidnapped and all of that. And I naturally, with my bent, whatever it is, or my subversive bent, <laughs> was interested in them. But I couldn't join because I didn't speak the language, so I was the problem. So it was sort of like, it was weird that way, you know? And I'd go to these cafes and stuff and look for the ones with the cool French people. <laughs> but before that, Nobody had thought of them as cool French people. You know, all of a sudden they were cool French people, mm -hmm. and with a sense of purpose and mission and uh, ideals and all the things that appeal to mm -hmm. certain young people. You know, so it was hot, and um, and y y you f you felt or I felt um, cut out of. Although there are many many English people learned the bloody language and joined. You know, mm -hmm. but I felt cut out and also. Theater is such a language-based thing. So, mm -hmm. but it was um, it was it was a vital time and a scary time. And so, getting the um, children's tour uh, provided you perhaps um, a passage out of that scary time. Well, a passage out of defeat, okay. and a pa it was like I I had never been so happy in my life. Mm -hmm. It was, to me, it was like a validation that I actually had a job mm -hmm. and to get away from all the ties that in Montreal that were not, I, no, I didn't have friends who were actors. I didn't hang with any actors. I was some, I'm somehow separate. All of a sudden, and it was a great bunch of people. We laughed, mm -hmm. you know? Who were, who were in the people? Uh, I don't them? know. A guy called Gary Chips. I tried to mm -hmm. find him. You know, they were, and they were actors who were in their early 30s, maybe 35, mm -hmm. and it was a good gig. Mm -hmm. And they had done tours before, mm -hmm. and they knew how to make it fun. Mm -hmm. And we laughed like crazy. And I was just, here I am. I'm laughing with actors. I'm getting to act. Mm -hmm. I'm traveling, which I love and didn't know I loved. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, okay, I know you want to hear about this, Andrew. Mm -hmm. And I was falling in love. Really? Oh, you're so bad. Hmm. Okay. Um, and I, I remember thinking, we're in this van and I remember thinking, I'm so happy. I'm mm -hmm. so, I knew I was happy. I knew this was good. Mm -hmm. And also seeing the Gaspise, it's beautiful. We never went anywhere, but, but to Plattsburgh, hmm. you know, we, we never traveled because right. my brother had asthma. No. <laughs> but, hey, it's hard having asthma. <laughs> but it was, um, and also to, oh, it was just so much fun. Right. It was so much fun. And you're and, young and, and you're young was, yeah, and, and yeah. just, yeah, yeah, just laughing like crazy people. Mm -hmm. So it was also the first time, which didn't happen in theater school, that I understood that uh, camaraderie, which is so much a part of every theater story, you right. know, which is that you really have fun, yeah. you know?